After uploading my video about mass surveillance and social credit score, I received this question from Walid. Walid lives in Australia and asked to know more about tracking systems. This is an interesting question and it gave me the idea to make this video, so I can give an elaborated answer. I want to use the time to focus less on technologies and more on police and security protocols and how to work around them. To analyze this topic, I took Australia as an example. There are claims that Facebook censors news from Australia, but I didn't study this subject yet, so I will not refer to it in this video. A few decades ago, a vast majority of the world's population lived in rural areas. Families owned land and were able to take care of their needs, but in the early 20th century, more and more people started migrating into big cities. Cities back then were inviting and provided newcomers with many opportunities. You used to have a high social status if you owned your own apartment in the city and living in a city meant better quality of life than you could ever hope for in the rural environment. Nowadays, many of us realize that this was a golden cage since we mostly spend our days working for a job that pays too little while we're wasting our youth and energy in this endless cycle as we are trapped in small places and cannot afford buying our own land. Looking at the way of living in the state of Victoria in Australia since April of 2020, it becomes clear what was the agenda behind pushing us to live in urban areas. Victoria is the most densely populated part of Australia, and since the beginning of the crisis, the place is a literal giant prison. Controlling masses of people became easier than ever thanks to the density of the population, and different technologies. The police is harassing citizens for no reason, and limitations of travel are applied and cancelled according to the government's needs. If we look back at different trends from 2020, we can conclude that in today's globalized world, a phenomenon that happens in one place as an experiment will sooner or later be adopted in every country. Let's say I am trapped in one of the cities where a lockdown is undergoing and I decided to get out of there. The first thing I do is deciding what will be my destination. I don't want to find myself in the middle of nowhere in a worse situation than the one I ran away from. If you plan on getting from point A to point B, make sure that you will be sheltered and fed there. You should think very carefully if you are going through with this and the implications of what will happen if your plan fails. I want you to realize that you are not playing a video game and if the police catches you in this day and age, it is not far-fetched to imagine them conducting medical experiments on you while you are being held by them, either without your consent or using some sort of manipulation. Moving on to the techniques that are used by law enforcement. The technologies that are used in the city are discussed in my video on mass surveillance. Here I want to teach you on face-to-face -face interactions. When discussing security protocols, it is important to understand that the police, the military and the private sector of security contractors work with similar techniques but each one of them has to modify their actions according to their jurisdiction, since using more authorities than one is legally allowed to use may result with a lawsuit issued by the victim. The authority you are most likely to encounter is the police, and I make this assumption for the rest of the video. But to cover more scenarios, I also discuss the differences between the authorities later on.
the types of observations I want to talk about are static, dynamic, and control room. Each type demands a different kind of preparation when you encounter it. First, let's start with what a static observation point is. There is a stand that is located in a strategic location. For example, it may be a checkpoint on a road that leads outside the city, and it will be populated by one or multiple guards. If it is possible, try to find information about which roads are populated by these checkpoints and try to avoid them as much as possible. Since it is not always an option to avoid checkpoints, you should be prepared with a valid reason for why you must get outside the city, in the case that it is not allowed. Some valid explanations you could use when you encounter a police checkpoint are Your work requires you to do so You could be delivering food from another city, for example You need medical assistance or specific medication that is not available in your current location you are required to assist an elderly person. Some of the reasons will not be enough on their own and you will be asked to provide documents. This is something to think about since you could forge a document and the person who is questioning you will not bother verifying whether this document is valid. But if they do, you will probably get arrested and face legal charges. If you could get a legit document, this is a better option. But if not, be prepared with your story, be consistent when you answer questions, and don't give them information that you were not asked to provide. If you are asked for the reason you leave the city, don't start talking about your destination. Give as little information as required. If you are asked by a figure of authority to show written permission of some sort, Shove it in their face with confidence. Try to end this interaction as quickly as you can. Do not joke with the police. They are not your friends and they are looking for reasons to detain you, so don't give them any. Static observation points cover a small area. The guards may not leave it. And if you run away from them, they will have to report it and stay in their positions. This brings me to the next type of observation, a dynamic one. The dynamic observation is another name for patrol. In a patrol, the guards usually sit in a car and either drive around a predefined route or use this backup to respond to an event. In case the static point meets obstacles handling a situation, the patrol will arrive. If you are driving on the road and they spot you, they may question you about your plans. When that happens, do what you would do in the case of being questioned by the operators of a static point. Remember that your goal is to end this interaction as soon as possible and continue on your journey. The third type of observation is the control room. You would never interact with them but you should be aware that they exist and they might be watching you. A control room contains a big number of screens that show live video footage from different locations. In case of suspicious behavior, the control room will contact one of the patrol cars and they will pull you over and question you about your business. To reduce interactions with the authorities, I found that it is best to travel outside normal working hours. Normally, supervisors will not be present at work at these times, and what you are left with is a group of unmotivated employees who do the bare minimum. This kind of employees just want to finish their shift and go home, which is good for you, since dealing with you means extra work for them. Next, I want to explain how verbal interaction with the police works. The conversations with law enforcers are not deep or insightful. Do you know how in American movies the cops always ask, Do you know why I pulled you over, son? They want to put you in a certain state of mind. There are psychological reasons for why they phrase the question this way. First of all, they are not your enemy, they are a parent. 
they talk with you because they are worried and they care about you. Secondly, you are inferior to them. They are in control and you must cooperate. They do this because they want you to trust them enough to incriminate yourself by giving them the answer that pleases them the most. It is important to know that so you do not fall into this trap. Everything they do or say has a reason. They all follow a certain script and it is not hard to think of the type of questions they may ask. Always be calm and consistent with your answers and never give them the answer they want you to give or the excuse they need in order to detain you. If you notice the interaction takes longer than it should, ask if you are allowed to leave. If you feel like the cop you talk to crosses boundaries, ask for their personal information and film them. You can mention a report or a lawsuit if it feels like it will help. And once again, whatever you say, remember that your goal is to end this interaction, not escalate it. After covering an encounterment with the police, let's consider the scenario of martial law taking place in where you are trying to escape from. The soldiers are less trained than the cops in dealing with civilian population. They probably hate what they do as none of them signed up for that when they joined the military. Nevertheless, they have much more authority than the police. When the army is deployed, it is considered a matter of national security by law. The way to deal with them is to be nice and provide the information you need in order to move on. It is not likely that a soldier will question you more than needed or look for a reason to detain you, as cops sometimes do. The third kind of authority is a security contractor. They have the least amount of power and the only thing they may do is detaining you until the police comes. If you provided the information you needed to and the guards don't leave you alone, Start documenting this interaction using a camera and demand the guards to identify themselves. State in the video that you gave them the permissions you are obliged to give and ask why you are being harassed. Since this is a company from the private sector, a lawsuit intimidates them the most. So use this knowledge if needed. The means of transportation are also important. And I just want to mention that there are different options and your transportation shouldn't contradict your story. If you deliver food, you should travel by a truck. If you only drive to buy something and come back, you shouldn't carry too much luggage. And while you should be prepared for different scenarios, it is possible to ride the whole way without being stopped once. A few months ago, I traveled between countries when the roads were said to be blocked and I wasn't bothered by anyone. Some of the threats and warnings made by the government are meant only to put fear in the citizens, while in reality the statements turn out to be lies. Finally, I want to be clear that the knowledge I shared with you here should be seen as general guidelines. I don't have the same perspective as you on the situation, so trust your gut.